Good morning and welcome to Bible Truth for Kids. Today we're going to be talking about the authority of Jesus. Authority means the power and the right to tell people what to do. Like policemen, they have authority. Teachers, they have authority. And parents, they have authority too. You know, lots of people have authority, but it's important to know that Jesus has the most authority. You know, because he made everything, animals, the whole world, Jesus has all authority. And in today's story, he is going to be showing the people, and especially the Pharisees, that he is in charge of everything and that he also has the right to judge. Now, in our lesson last week, we saw Jesus coming into Jerusalem as a king. A king that the people didn't expect, very different, but exactly as the Old Testament prophets said that he would come. And the Pharisees were not happy about that. All the rejoicing and cheering from the people and the children, it really irritated them. And they'd said to each other, look, we haven't gained anything. The whole world is going after him. Now, this is the route that Jesus took when he came into Jerusalem. When they had got to Bethany, they had gone up to the Mount of Olives to a place called Bethage. And this is where Jesus told his disciples to go and get a donkey. And they did. And then Jesus rode down into Jerusalem and he went into the temple. And he had looked around at everything. But that night, Jesus took his disciples back to Bethany to stay overnight. They had some friends there in Bethany. Now that happened on a Sunday. Now the next day, Monday, as they left Bethany to go back towards Jerusalem, Jesus was hungry and he saw a fig tree up ahead on the road. And so he went up to the fig tree to find figs. Now these are what figs look like. They are actually a really delicious fruit, and it was a season for figs. But as Jesus looked through the tree, he didn't find a single fig, not one. All he found were leaves, leaves, and more leaves. And so Jesus cursed the fig tree. Now that doesn't mean that Jesus swore at the tree, but he said, may you never bear fruit again. And when they got to Jerusalem, Jesus went straight to the temple. Now remember, it was the time of the Passover, and so hundreds and hundreds of Jewish pilgrims had come into Jerusalem to celebrate. Now they needed to get their money exchanged to the right currency. So what that means is, you know, in Canada, we use this kind of money. But if we go to any other country, we have to get it exchanged to use the kind of money that they use, and you get charged for doing that. So these people needed their money exchanged to the right currency, but they also needed to buy animals to sacrifice. That was important. Well, the money lenders and the animal sellers had set up shop in the temple, God's house. And, you know, not only <clears throat> were they exchanging their money, they were charging them extra for doing it, and they also charged extra for the animals. So like if a bird cost $5, they would charge them 10 If a lamb cost 20 they'd charge them 50 Now Jesus had seen this, everything that was happening last night. And so when he got there in the morning, he made a whip out of cords and he began to drive them all out of the temple. He flipped over all their tables of money. He let out all the birds and animals from their pans. He was righteously angry. He said, my father's house is a house of prayer and you've made it into a den of robbers. You know, Jesus wouldn't even let anyone carry anything through the temple. Now, Jesus had the authority to do this. This was his father's house. It was to be a place of worship and prayer. Well, it was just pandemonium and chaos. Can you imagine all of the yelling and squawking and oh, awful for the people but after Jesus had driven them all out anyone who was lame who was blind who needed healing came to Jesus in the temple and he healed them all and then he took his disciples back again to Bethany for the night 
Now, <clears throat> this last week of Jesus' life is called the Passion Week. And so Sunday was the triumphal entry. Monday was a day of authority, which we just talked about. And now Tuesday is called a day of conflict. And Tuesday is going to be a very long day. Now, as they went back again from Bethany towards Jerusalem on Tuesday, they passed that fig tree. And Peter said, Lord, look at that fig tree. It's withered away. I mean, the disciples were astonished. But Jesus has authority over nature. And he said to the disciples, through prayer and faith, you will accomplish my great, much greater things than this. Now, when they got into Jerusalem, you know who was waiting for them, the Pharisees. They were still really upset about uh, what Jesus had done in the temple. And they were just angry with Jesus and they challenged his authority. They said, whose authority are you doing this by? Where do you get this authority to do the things that you're doing? But Jesus wouldn't answer them. Instead, he asked them a question. He said, where did John the Baptist get his authority to baptize? Did that come from heaven or did it come from a man? Well, they talked it over and they said, you know, if we say it came from heaven, then he's going to ask us why we didn't believe John. And if we say it came from a man, well, then the people will mob us because many of the people believed Jesus and followed after him. And so um, they said to Jesus, well, you know, we don't know. And Jesus said, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Well, you know, the Pharisees' hatred of Jesus had hardened their hearts. They were dead set against him. But you know, the time is short now. Jesus only has one week left and he needs to warn the Pharisees what will happen if they keep rejecting Jesus. And so he told them three parables. They were actually three parables of warning. The first parable was this. It was the parable of the two sons. He said a man had two sons and he had a vineyard and he said to the first son, go and work in the vineyard today. But the son said, no, I won't. But then later he changed his mind and he did go. Now the father had said the same thing to the second son. He had said, go work in the vineyard for the day. And the son had said, yes, I will. But he didn't. So Jesus asked those people who were listening. He said, which of the two sons did what the father wanted? And they said, well, the first one. And Jesus said, you're right. You know, the first son, he's like people who at first refuse to believe in Jesus, but then they change their mind and they repent and they follow after him. But he said, the second son, I said, those are like your religious leaders. They say they believe in God. It looks like they believe in God, but they do not. They did not believe John the Baptist. They did not believe Jesus or his authority. The warning from that parable was, beware of rejecting Jesus. Well, the second parable he told them was called the parable of the tenants. Now, a tenant, tenants are, are people who rent and work on the land of someone else while the owner is away. And so in this parable, the owner, landowner, he had planted a vineyard and then he hired tenants to look after the land for him. Now, after a while, the owner sent three servants to collect money from the tenants. But, you know, they beat the first servant and they killed the other two. So the owner sent a lot more servants. But, you know, they were treated the same way. And so the owner thought, well, I will send my one and only son to them because they will respect him. But, you know, they didn't. They killed the owner's son. Well, you know, the Pharisees knew that Jesus was talking about them because, you know, God had sent them prophets and they had killed the prophets. And now God had sent his one and only son and they were rejecting him. I mean, even now they were trying to find a way to arrest and kill him, you know, but they couldn't because so many of the people were following after him, so they couldn't do anything. 
the warning of that parable was the same. Beware of rejecting Jesus. Well, he told them one last parable. It was called the parable of the wedding feast. Now, in this parable, the king, he had prepared a great wedding banquet, and he invited many people to come. And when everything was ready, he called them to come, but they refused. In fact, some of them said, well, I can't even be bothered. Nobody came. Well, the king was furious. And so he sent his servants out, and he said, listen, Go out into the streets and invite anybody and everybody. They are welcome to my banquet. Homeless people, poor people, lost people, anyone. And so the servants did, and pretty soon the king's hall was full of people. So he met them in the banquet hall, and he gave them special wedding clothes to wear to the banquet. But you know, a little bit later, as the king was walking around, he noticed... A man did not have the proper wedding clothes on. And he said, friend, how did you get in here without the proper clothes? Well, the, you know, the man, just, he didn't know what to say. He couldn't say anything because he'd rejected those wedding clothes. And so the king had him thrown out immediately. The warning of this parable was the same. Beware of rejecting Jesus. You know, just like those wedding guests had to have the proper wedding clothes, God will not allow anybody into heaven who has not had their sins forgiven by Jesus. You know, Jesus has the authority to judge. Jesus told these parables because he was warning them that if they reject his forgiveness of sins, if they reject him as the Son of God, they will not get into heaven. They will go to a place called hell, which is a place of terrible torment. But he has the right and the authority to decide what happens to people who reject him. It was a warning to the Pharisees not to reject Jesus. But you know, it's also a warning for us too. But there's really good news, and that is for people who do not reject Jesus, he promises eternal life in heaven a life forever with him and not only that but right now he promises to help us in our life every day to obey him and to follow after him so many people have authority but jesus has all authority and next week we're going to see what else happened on tuesday which was the day of conflict all right see you next time